Hello, today crew. Welcome back to today pass. You're joined by myself, Scott, and Stiggy over here. Hello. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Okay. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to do, we've gone south. I'm saying south on Ford Bridge Road, which is the road that we're going to come out to. We're parked next to Ashford Driving Test Centre and Middlesex, not to be confused with Kent. Now we're going north, guys. So stick when you're ready and it's safe. Drive on and at the exit here to our VIP parking, turn right and then reach the traffic lights to turn right again, please. And this will be us turning right at the top of Ford Bridge Road. We've We've just passed the test centre here on our left. You may not be fortunate enough to find parking outside the driving test centre. If you look back at the channel playlist for Ashford, we have shown you other opportunities for parking spaces, which are going to be more likely for your driving test. Look at the road markings here, turning right in the right lane with the right only arrow. Okay, now there's a sign up there for Felton. Now you might be asked to follow signs, as you're probably aware, you have a 20% on your driving test chance of being asked to follow signs for your independent driving. More likely to have a sat-nav. We don't have the sat-nav on. I'm, I'm calling out the directions for Stig here, but the sat-nav is a good way of doing your independent driving because it's constantly there showing you with a blue line where you're going and calling out audio towards you being prompted about what road, what turn you're doing and how far away it is. Okay, so what we're going to be doing now as we're going to be going down uh, towards Church Road. Actually, I believe we're on Church Road now, and we're going ahead at the next roundabout. So, uh, on a long straight road like this, uh, just look for warning triangles, look out long, look as long as possible, pedestrian crossings, and just plan yourself ahead of time. See the next hazard. Think what you're going to need to do. Like this is an example. Reducing the speed. The observations are very important at junctions. And we've got a change of uh, change direction here of the parked car. So you've got lots of multiple hazards coming up. Always choose the one that's closest for you. Mentally process this, what you're going to be doing, and then move on to the next hazard. We have signs here so you won't get any direction from your examiner as they're looking to see that you take responsibility to look at the signs. Okay, so at the roundabout, we're going to be going ahead, please, which will be the second exit following the road ahead. Good, nice reduction in speed, plenty of observations. Stig's really keeping this left lane, hogging the left lane, timed his mirrors and signals perfectly at the first exit to show everybody we're taking the next exit. We're going to stop here at the stop line. We're not going to stop on top of the pedestrian crossing. As you can see, there's pedestrians nearby. They may press that button, and then we get left on the crossing, blocking the crossing. This would be an immediate fail for stopping on an active pedestrian crossing. So if you can see there's a traffic jam, hold back, wait at the stop line, unless you believe you could completely cross the pedestrian crossing and progress down the road, then that's acceptable. Make your progress, take control, go over the crossing and keep following the traffic. Now, we're going to be going towards the next roundabout, I believe, and then we're going to be taking the second exit. So... Yep, so next roundabout, second exit. It doesn't say left or right, so we'll see what happens as we get closer towards this roundabout. We'll probably have a sign coming up, and we can have a good look to see where the second exit is. Now, if it says second exit, I'm kind of assuming it doesn't say ahead, so I'm going to believe it's a right turn. This is another advantage. Look at this speed change right here. Am I correct in saying that's a change? That was, wasn't it? So we had 30, and, and the council seems to think it's a good place to draw your attention from the road and put up speed signs on the brow of a hill. Not only is it drawing your attention from the brow, it's making you look up and over to the right as well, which is completely going to take your eyes off the road ahead. Anyways, just a glance, guys, a second look. Take that speed sign into account. Adjust your speed. I don't believe it's been safe to do 40 yet. Not with the brow of the hill and these winding bends. But if you feel you've got enough visibility, good conditions, then adjust your speed accordingly. So we're looking ahead. I see the roundabout. It's way, way, way down the road. So this is another advantage to sat-nav independent drive. Because if you're asked to follow signs, you're constantly looking for signs. And you're thinking, am I lost? 
lost? Where am I? Where's the sign? If you are asked to follow signs, you're not sure, have a two-way conversation with your examiner. Say to them, look, I'm sorry, have I missed a sign? Um, where are we going again? You know, I feel like I haven't seen a sign for a while. It could crack a joke if you like. And the examiners will help you by telling you, look, the sign's further down or you haven't missed a sign, whatever. So second exit stick, we're going to see London. Okay? Central London, second exit, please. This is going to take us on to the Great South West Road, I believe, or leading us into, yes, into that direction, second exit. So, look, multiple lanes here, guys. You're looking for road markings. Now, Stig's used the correct lane. He's looked for his straight arrow. We're practically going straight, second exit. Um, maybe that's the reason why it hasn't had the direction on here, I've noted, because it's kind of an argued situation. Some people may say straight. Some people may say a different direction. But if we say second exit, exit, we know where we're going. First exit passed, we're in that straight arrow lane, which is where we're going. Nice lane discipline, staying in between the lines, and we followed this left lane all the way around the roundabout, which is the safest lane to use. Now, I'm looking for the speed changes. We've got the constant reminders here, 40 miles an hour. Okay, and now that we're on there, what we're doing is turning left at the traffic light, please stick. So the traffic lights turn left. Nice mirrors, nice signal, done very early on. Moved into this left only lane to turn left at the traffic lights. That was brilliant. Now we're adjusting our speed early, nice break in here, sticks in complete control, following the curb round here on the left. So if there's more than one lane, Stick's done an amazing job of keeping his lane. Can you see that? Hasn't drifted out, he's followed the curb. Speed changed to 50 miles an hour now. Oh my lord. Okay, so we're really getting some speed now. Um, Stig's in his correct lane, doing the correct speed. So this is where the old route would have been turning um, onto... I think Bedford Road, which is not no longer used. Look at the cyclist coming up here. So Stig's checking his mirrors, going round, completely changed lanes, giving him the most amount of room possible. Straight on the roundabout, please, Stig, following the road ahead. Nice control, slowing, looking, nice glance there, early observations. Nice looking again, double checking. Nice gap there in the traffic, using it to his advantage and following the road ahead. So this is where there would be the Bedford Road on the left, which you would have used before to do manoeuvres. We're not going to go down that road stick, which would be this one here. We're going to keep going further down to Long Lane. So what we're going to do is when we get closer, I'll give you clear instructions to take that next road on the left. If it's a road that's a little bit harder for you to see and the examiners know this, they will probably give you some point of reference like a lamppost or a sign or some kind of area where you can actually see. And then that will be a place where they can draw your attention to show you where the road is. Okay, so we're going to have quite a wide road entry here. So there shouldn't be any need for me to kind of point that out to Stig. Just tell him take the next road on the left, please. Can you see white lines on the road, gaps in houses? Next road on the left. There we go. Yeah, not too bad. Pretty wide. Nice road. There we go. Speed change there to 30 miles an hour. Stig's having a little look over there on the right-hand side, but that road does need to give way to Stiggy. All right, so now we're going to take the second road on the right, please, Stig. Second road on the right, which will take you into Hollywell Road. Okay, so no markings on that one. No markings on that one. Although it does look like a road because it had a road sign on it. We're looking for Hollywell Lane. So no road markings on that one. So I'm not sure if we're counting these as roads. So it looks like we're going to be going a bit further down the road. So ignore my last direction stick. Just continue to follow the road ahead, please. I'm going to locate where the Hollywell Road is. Okay. So all I need from you, Stig, is just to follow the road ahead. Lodgeway, London Road. Okay. Okay, that's all good. All right. So just continue to follow the road ahead. So not this one here, Stig. Um, I'd like you to take the next road on the right, please. Oh. 
Okay, Stiggy, just follow the road down to the end for me, please. Um, so these are perfect areas for your examiners to take you to. Uh, there's a few different topics that the examiners are going to cover with you in residential roads like this. Meeting situations, identifying roads and junctions, just addressing your speed. Uh, we're following to the end, please, Stig. So all the way down. Um, and then there's meeting situations, which is quite common. So I'm looking to see if we get a car that might come in the opposite direction here to see how Stig's going to deal with this. We're looking for gaps on the left if we need to pull in. And the way that you'll know if you need to slow and stop is by the speed of the oncoming vehicle. So look how fast they're traveling. The higher their speed, the higher the risk, the more likely you'll need to stop. Okay? So these are the best ways for you to make decisions about meeting situations. Obviously, residential roads like this can be used for doing the maneuvers also. So, so, you know, you might be asked to pull up on the left, do a parking, or pull up on the right and drive on. Okay? All right, Stiggy. Uh, it's funny when, when you take a driver to an area that they don't know so well. You can really kind of feel the change in the way that they're driving. So that what Stig's doing now is he's really slowing down. I can see him looking at the reflections of the cars as he gets to the bends, which can really help to see if there's any oncoming traffic. Because we must assume that there's a car around the corner. Okay, at the end of the road, Stig, I'd like you to turn left. Now, normally assumptions aren't a good thing in general, but if you assume that there's something around the corner, you're planning early. So if there really is, you'll be able to control the car safely and come to a nice, smooth, slow stop. All right, so we're going to be coming towards the roundabout just after turning here, please, Stig. And then what I'd like to do is get a new sat-nav, please. <laughs> yeah, so I'd like you to follow the sat-nav for me, please. Thank you. Yep, just follow the sat nav here for me. So it's telling us to turn left at the end of the road. Thank you, Stig. Okay, I'm going to test Stiggy now. Okay, Stiggy. Keep following the road, we should come to Town Lane. Now, Town Lane is a big dual carriageway, the A30, okay? So this is where the examiner will take you down and you'll follow back through and around to the back of the test centre, which is the Staines Bypass. So Stig, you see the second set of traffic lights, and so not these ones, but those red traffic lights coming up. Turn right, please. So the traffic lights turn right. Now you can see this is a big controlled crossroads here. This is another area where a lot of people may get a bit anxious. No, I think what I'd like you to do now, and this is quite common on the driving test here, if you could ignore that, please, ignore the sat-nav. Um, just so we don't get lost, but I'm actually taking Stig onto the route. Okay, so we can show you this last part, which is going to be a, a very, very um, important part of this route. And probably, I, I'm assuming, a big place where people are going to fail. So back to where we are at the moment. So we've got a big controlled crossroads here. Stig's obviously in the correct lane. There's only one lane for turning right, and it's this lane. And we know it's this lane because this is the only lane that's got a right-only arrow. Now, sometimes you might have have more than one lane turning right, especially if it's a big controlled crossroads like this. So look for road markings. If there's more than one lane that's turning right, use the left one. Okay, I hope that is relatively simple. Now we've got the filter arrow. We didn't have that on a previous video because I believe it was out, but filter arrow is a green arrow pointing in the direction that you wish to travel. Now if you have that filter arrow on, all other traffic is held at a red light, giving you a time to actually complete your turn. Don't forget, people might jump lights, so just take care that a cyclist or any other road user hasn't jumped the light, and then just proceed through with your turn. All right, so Stig, what's the speed limit? I heard a little warning chime there. It's, it's actually not 30, you're doing the correct speed. I think the car just changed, didn't it? So our technology was informing us, I believe, of the speed limit there. That's why we heard a warning chime. The warning chime addresses our speed. It tells us if we've reached the speed limit or not. So I heard that chime, check the speed. Stig was at the correct speed, so he's done nothing wrong. But 
that car's technology was incorrect. So we checked the road, Stig said 40, because he saw the sign there, and he knows it's actually a 40 mile an hour road. So beyond these 40s, can you see the big yellow barrier, or sorry, sign, and it's got the 30 change. Look how big the circle is in comparison to the reminder circles before. Big circles, both sides of the road, and it's actually printed on the road, showing us a speed change. So this is a very good area to have that speed change, nice and open no obstructions on the signs, also nice and easy to see because it's actually clearly marked on the road. Very important when you're on dual carriageway like this, and we're going to have this coming up as we follow these roads back towards the test center, speed changes. Now the next hazard we can see here, I see giveaway signs. They look like they're for us, but they're not for the, for the side road. But it gives the impression because they're twisted like that. Now we have the road works here. Not too difficult, one lane, there's not a lot of traffic. That's a nice bit about Ashford. It's nice and gentle. Now what we want to do is actually follow this sat nav. So we're gonna be going left at these second set of traffic lights, please stick. So the next traffic light's off to the left side for me, please. This is the Staines Bypass. This is cutting off to the left of Staines Roundabout. So, nice. Well done, Stig. Because normally when you come through on the left bypass like this, you'll actually have like a slip road, which wouldn't be intervened by a traffic light. But this is, and you've got the road markings, which is near impossible to see any area or any stop line, which I talked about earlier, which is a white solid line. Stig's seen the traffic light, obviously is a responsible road user. He's seen that red light and knows what a red light means. He's come to a stop just before the traffic light. He's not going to be penalized for any road markings because there are none, but he's done a safe decision well done stick so beyond this traffic light i'm looking for road markings i don't see any but regardless of road markings take care road markings are obviously very useful because they show us who has priority and can guide us where we need to go and just helps us in general but during road works you may not have any also another side note if it's raining and the road marks are a bit faint you may not see them clearly so take your time if you need to just slow your car a little bit in order to read signs see road markings do this as this will actually help you and it's necessary to do so in order for you to make safe decisions now the traffic lights changing sticks checked all his mirrors looked over to the right side just in case and we're on our way as there was a big gap and I thought there was a big hole there as well as you see that um, or on our right so it's safe for us to proceed now speed limit here is stick yeah, so we've got a car helping us out there. Nice sign there on the right there. Stig's probably seen the signs before, which is still a little bit of a faux pas for me. So that's why I was looking for the car, looking for signs. We know it's 50 and we're certain we can build our speed. I think Stig might have noticed the cyclist on the left here, maybe believing it could be in the actual carriageway itself. Obviously, we can see it's not. So Stig started to address his speed again. So here we can actually keep 50. We have a wide road. We've got two lanes, good visibility, good conditions. There's no reason for us to be going any slower than 50. Stig's doing an amazing job of actually sticking to the speed limit. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this so much is because a lot of people start doing 40 miles an hour on a road like this where it's 50 miles an hour, good conditions, no reason to be doing 40, and they will fail the driving test for use of speed. So you must make sure to actually build your speed, get to the limit if it's safe to do so. Obviously, if you have bad weather conditions, bad poor visibility or road surfaces, these are all good reasons for slowing down. You know, there's multiple reasons, but these are a few so we talked about the rain earlier, you know, it's a good reason for slowing down. We've got warning triangles addressing our speed here, the roundabout and the pedestrian crossing. We have countdown markers, turn, turn left first exit, please stick. Uh, we have countdown markers here addressing us every hundred yards. A uh, big rectangle here with the white lines in it. Countdown, three white lines, two white lines, one white line and then junction. Sticks down his mirrors and signals to the left. Hold his lane discipline to the left. Address his speed from a running to a jogging to a walking speed. Having to stop here because we're at a big dual carriageway roundabout. And this time there was a few cars coming from the right hand side. So Stick has to slow down, stop and give priority. And wait for a safe chance to emerge. We addressed the walkout rule earlier. So if you're waiting at a junction you believe it's a safe opportunity that you would walk out into the road. Straight on the roundabout please Stick straight on please 
um, then it's a safe time for you to drive out. Now you can go a little bit on these circles if you feel you need to, but what you don't want to do with the white circles is go 100% on top. You're allowed to cut 50% with the right hand side of the vehicle. This is often necessary because going round some of the circles, they've been painted too large, especially for large vehicles like vans and bigger vehicles. Going around the circle, you end up going on the pavement. So for this reason, it's safe and necessary we can drive slightly on the circles. Okay, we're pretty much back at the test center now. I believe we're actually on um, Ford Bridge Road. I believe we're on Ford Bridge Road. Okay, I could be wrong. And this is pretty much where we started from, obviously, back at the test center. Yeah, this looks very familiar now. What I'd like you to do is go a little bit further down the road. And I'm going to ask you to turn left into the side road. Okay, so it's going to be the next road on the left. It's going to be somewhere just after to this red car should hopefully see the entrance yeah and let's take this next road on the left good mirrors good signal nice speed pedestrian crossing here no pedestrians assuming there's a car as we enter the road preparing to stop if we need to and we can see it's clear now we can build our speed but i'm going to ask you to pull up on the left please just stay on the road anywhere on the left is fine Examiners aren't too fussy about you being absolutely perfect with your parking at the end, but do make sure to always signal when you pull over to the left. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you're still tuned to us, thank you very much. Leave a like on the video and stay tuned for our next Ashford test route. Stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time. Wake up, stick. <laughs>